Order the uh, pension board meeting of trust. Uh, um, this is our regular meeting, and um, let's take a uh, call to order. If I could have, how about Mr. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. Do the pledge of allegiance, please. <laughs> pledge of allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Roll call. Here. Judge <laughs> Director Woods, Director Wagner, Director Ruby, Here. Director Baker, Beal, Beal, Manny, Manny. All present. And Director Pixley is on Zoom right now. He is. Yes. Great. Uh, are there any additions or deletions to uh, to the agenda from anybody? Um, hearing none, um, let's next do the review and approval of the April 2022 meeting minutes, please. Make a motion to approve the minutes of the and it's a motion by Director Woods. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Um, all in favor of passing these? Aye. 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 Okay, we're good. Is there any old business? Old business for the pension board. None of, I have none listed. So under new business, let's look at the first quarter 2022 allocation report. I'm assuming we have to approve this. Any comments? Uh, 20, first quarter 2022 allocation report. I'm not sure if I have to do that or not, but we'll go ahead and do it. I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you. Second Second. Motion. Okay. Second. 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 approve the allocation report? Aye. Aye. Chief, or any of you who are more familiar with pension board, is there much? Is there anything else we need to approve, like distributions or anything of that nature? I don't think so. No, I don't, I don't believe so because it's the standard that it is every every month. Okay. Is there any changes? Any any other business to be brought before the pension board? Seeing Can none. I have something? Okay. Thank you, Director Pixley. <laughs> Chair? <laughs> so, yeah, so I just want to remind everybody that I've been mentioning for the last uh, probably year that we were going to have someone that's going to give us a second set of eyes on uh, our pension and how we are looking actuarially. I've been working with Barb, um, and Barb and I have been trying to get this, this information to be analyzed by this um, by this Pam Feely, and Pam is works with the SDA, gives us a, an opportunity just to be assured that we are doing the right thing. Uh, Barb had mentioned that there is a, 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 a audit that is done on these numbers, so and that, that everything looks good, and that that gives us all comfort to know that we're able to look at the long term cost of. Um, what our pension is going to have to be allocated for our members. But uh, I'm excited to have this with the second set of eyes and then a presentation for the board and the pension board so that we can have a, a, a better understanding and glimpse of what actually we are looking at. 
Um, and so I will just put that out there for everybody. And hopefully this next quarter, we will, able to, we will be able to have Ms. Feely providing this presentation for us. Great, so we'll maybe make a note of that as being old business so we can at least remember to come back. In, in, in fact, just even an agenda item, I was hoping that we could get it. Uh, I just want to make mention that uh, it's not this quarter, <laughs> it's next quarter. It's always next quarter, but I, I'm almost positive we'll have it next quarter now. Um, and I, I appreciate Barb's efforts in getting us the information, getting her the information, but she could not get it done in time for today's meeting. Okay, perfect though. We'll uh, make a note, put it under old business, and then if we can, we'll move it up to an agenda item at the next quarter meeting. Perfect. With that, I will take a motion to adjourn the pension board. So make the motion. We got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> that closes out the pension board meeting. I hope I've run my first successful one. Nice work. <laughs> Record time. <laughs> Thank you. All right, well then we're moving on to the regular meeting of the Board of Directors for Elk Creek Fire Protection District. Um, we've already called, or well, we should call this meeting to order. Um, we've already done the Pledge of Allegiance. We know that all of the board members are here. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? If not, can I get an approval? Now I get what I was supposed to have done. Approval, a uh, motion to approve the agenda as submitted. Motion to approve. I'll second it. All in favor of the agenda? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, let's uh, review the regular meeting minutes. Uh, just a quick glance over if you haven't had a chance to read them earlier. And once somebody feels comfortable, I'll take a motion to accept. Uh, well, first, we should see if there's any changes. Any changes? Okay. Yeah, I'll take a motion to approve the June 2022 minutes. Second to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Director Woods, we are up to you with financials. Okay, so I had a couple, not questions, but comments regarding my presentation last month that people couldn't see it. So I've made some updates to my presentation, and let's get on with it. So, the first slide, assuming it comes up, woohoo! I've been so far so good. This is the slide that we normally present with three graphs all together and kind of separate slides. Okay. It's Greg It's Greg making noise. <laughs> so, property taxes are pretty much on spot on. Um, if I look at the month numbers, which we overall revenue, if I look at the month number, there were things that fluctuated. As expected, property tax collections were down, but there were other things that were up. So all in all, the forecast that we had versus the actuals for overall revenue are pretty spot on. Any questions about the graph? No? Okay. Expenses, overview of overall expenses. They're tracking at less than budgeted. A couple contributors to that would be the administration department. Um, we've not seen all of the bills yet come through for legal expenses, and we're expecting that to, to come to fruition, so we expect that number to come up. Um, training, we're still looking at hiring a deputy chief, so it's pretty far down in terms of uh, under budget. So those couple things and maybe some other miscellaneous things have brought overall expenses down. 
Net income, this is a comparison of tracking net income versus net income for last year. And you can see that we're tracking pretty close to the ups and downs of net income for 2022 versus 2021. So we'll go on to look at some, a little more detail on things. Property taxes are our biggest source of revenue. This is what the monthly budget looks like. It looks a little screwy, I know, but this represents the fact that we get in early in the year, we get property taxes, and then we get a second burst of property taxes because a lot of people divide their property tax payments between early in the year and mid year. So we see flips up in March and July, generally. But if we look at the overall um, property tax revenue, it's pretty spot on. It really is. Um, it's, you know, we're looking at property tax annualized revenue of 2.6 million budgeted and about 2.5 million in actual received. So nothing particularly alarming there. Let's go on to expenses. Our biggest expense in expenses, in a sense, is labor. Obviously, that is the biggest expense for the fire department. So if you look at the monthly forecast, and, and keep in mind when I do a forecast for 2022, I use the percentage of spread over 2021, because that seems to be at least reasonably accurate. Sometimes I have to adjust it if things look a little screwy. But what we're looking at on a monthly basis is labor. And this is labor adjusted for the amount that we bill for the IGAs that we have. So we bill 100% out of fuels crew, we bill 50% out of maintenance, and 50% out of preventative services. So I adjust the labor numbers by that because we actually do get money in return for it. So it's not an expense, it's a wash. So this is annualized labor expense adjusted for building months again. And, and you can see that it's it's like very, very spot on, pretty much like that. Um, we've got 1.3 million in forecast, 1.3 million in expense. So just right on in terms of what was forecasted. So when I take labor and I take surf out of it, and SURF is our out-of-district expenses. We get reimbursed from the state for that. Last year, we got reimbursed for about $1.2 million, which is what we spend. We bill not only labor expenses, but we bill equipment and fuel and travel, et cetera. So I have to send a bunch of checks for travel. Um, so this is just the labor portion. Surf. So this is labor with the adjusted amounts coming out and the surf amounts coming out. So again, you can see a little bit of the dip for the month. But again, if you look at overall labor less the surf, less the adjustments, we are spot on with what was forecasted versus what we actually had spent. Any questions about that? Got one more labor graph, and that's the surf. It looks a little screwy because surf, generally, we see it go up and up and up during fire season and then coming down when fire season slows down. But what we're seeing in 2022 <coughs> is the, act, the fires are starting earlier and it's potentially that they might go a little bit longer. So while we're, quote, under a monthly amount budget, if you look at the overall graph for the year, we are tracking a bit above what we forecasted. Again, we get reimbursed for it, so nothing that we need to get alarmed about. Any questions about labor or revenue? Okay, my next graph is my favorite graph. Okay, this is my absolute favorite graph. I love this graph. So it's kind of hard to see the numbers because it's kind of screwy, but it's kind of hard to see the numbers. This looks at SERP reimbursement. Because again, as we talked about last year, we submitted 1.2 million and we got 1.2 million back. This year, we are at 322,000 
in terms of what we have submitted to the state for reimbursement. That was for May and June. May is when we started sending stuff to the state for reimbursement. And <clears throat> there were six fires. So that's where you see, if you look at the graph, we're a little bit ahead of last year in terms of fires that we've gone to. There was a fire in Nebraska that we assisted with. That was in April. There were three in New Mexico that went April through June. There was one in Texas in May. And then one in Colorado in June. So what you're seeing is the 321,000 that we've submitted as of June, we've received, that's the, the green line, we've received about 26,000 back. We have 296,000 left to be reimbursed. Based on the aging that I'm looking at, we're actually getting the money faster this year nice. than we did last year. And that's because Beth, who works part time, has really kept up with these expenses. So it's just filing early and we're getting the money early. So that's all good. The blue line is last year what we submitted. So we don't know exactly what we're going to submit this year because it that just depends on the fire season. Um, so I just put that on there because I thought it would be a nice comparison last year versus this year. We'll just kind of keep track of that going forward. Any questions? Okay. We have to approve the month expenses, which were $359,357.20. So I'd like a motion to approve the expenses for the month of June 2022. So moved. <laughs> I guess Greg could say too. Do we have a second? Second. We have an approval of the expenditure, monthly expenditures of 359, 357. Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you all for your attention. I appreciate it. Greg, I'll send you the presentation. Okay. I did. Yes, I would you have motion to second. Yeah, I second. Well, we come to the point in the agenda. I thought I saw. He creeped in here and then he dipped out. Yeah, I should show you. Is everybody here? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's. Yeah, I got to bring everybody in. Swear you in. Welcome, welcome. Deb Nevers. <laughs> 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 working on it. Hi, <laughs> 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 I'm Director Wagner. Let's see, is Devin, we're going to swear you in, so you're just going to follow me. Uh, raise your right hand. I, I, Devin Evers, do solemnly swear to do my duty. Do solemnly swear to do my duty as a firefighter for the Elk Creek Fire Protection District to the best of my ability. As a firefighter for the Elk Creek Fire Protection District to the best of my ability to serve my commanding officers with respect and dignity. To serve my commanding officers with respect and dignity. To serve the citizens of the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. To serve the citizens of the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. With compassion, courage, and integrity. With compassion, courage, and integrity. And to uphold the laws of the Constitution of the United the laws and Constitution of the United States of America. To uphold the laws and I'm sorry. The laws and constitution. The laws and constitution of the United States of America, of the United States of America, the state of Colorado, the state of Colorado, and the Elk Creek Fire Protection District, and the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you.
to work. I don't have to do anything. So, <laughs> just sit down. So that was great. Oh. Uh, Chief Ware, let's continue the uh, positive atmosphere. Oh, of course. <laughs> All right, I'll see if I can. I can't really follow that, but I'll give it a go. All right, so uh, June was uh, pretty busy. We didn't have the calls, but we had a lot of things going on. So we got our annual pump testing done for fire engines and our water tenders completed. We ended up with two trucks that ended up failing. One was a wildland engine. Then, so for what pump testing is, NFPA has a, a recommended amount that everything has. Or well, pump testing is recommended by NFPA. Every year you have to make sure a pump meets what it's built for in gallons per minute. So pump testing, you run a bunch of water through it and you run it up to what that is for a set period of time. It's usually far more intense than you'd ever run it on a fire, but therefore you make sure it works. Um, we did have two trucks that failed. One of them was the old 1998 engine that usually every year there's mechanical because it's a 1998 and that's just what it does. Um, it had some plumbing failures. Um, then the other was a wildland engine. It was actually pumping at 75%. It's probably got some rocks in the impeller. Um, just due to the nature of wildland fire is it usually has pretty much the worst water possible and that's just part of the course. It happens, very repairable, um, and both issues have been have been mitigated. Um, we also ended up doing hose and ladder testing. We didn't have any ladder ladders fail this time, but uh, we did have a fair amount of hose fail, but that's again normal. Normal wear and tear on hose, same thing, you pump it up to far more working pressure than you'd have on the fire ground. And if there are any issues with it, it fails during hose testing versus in a life safety issue. Um, and you'll probably see a check in the next month to end up buying those or replace. That's pretty much what we do every year as, as it goes. That's just the way we end up retiring fire hose. Uh, but it's, it's super important to do. A lot of places don't do it, but it has a lot to do with keeping our firefighters safe during operations. Consolidation discussions are starting again on Monday. We did take a break for the board elections. Uh, we're having a meeting on Monday the 18th at 10, and Director Pixley and Director Woods will be there. And at that point in time, we are going to probably have some more direction for the boards. Um, the Chiefs have been working. We've actually got an agenda and some actionable items that the board representatives are going to bring back, and hopefully the boards will decide to move forward with what we're going to be talking about. Um, Inner Canyon, North Fork, and Elk Creek have all adopted that resolution that just said they're going to continue to explore the consolidation. Indian Hills did not. Um, yeah, and we're going to hopefully keep moving forward with this. So at the August board meeting, there will be some actionable items that we'll move forward with. Uh, the wet cooler weather has brought green vegetation and reduced fire danger for the area. We've had a number of lightning caused fires but uh, they didn't really present any containment issues. This, this trend is predicted to last through the end of July. Then it's supposed to dry out, and we may end up with an elevated fire danger. The fires right now, people have asked, you know, are we going to go in fire restrictions with the fires? Fires are very normal. It's when it's dry and they become larger and a problem. I mean, that's, that's what you have. These lightning caused fires, I think we had four last month. The forest has had a handful. Inner Canyon's had them. They haven't presented any containment issues. They were just pretty minor fires. They just don't spread through the wet vegetation. Uh, the moderate fire danger has let us send some resources out to assist with other fires across the U.S. Right now, we have firefighters in Alaska, Utah, and Texas. And, um, we, actually, we are also finally able to reschedule a rookie academy graduation. It's been postponed due to the pandemic on August 13th from 10 to 12, and we'll have invitations coming out soon. And we also, and in all this good news, we've also had some uh, issues here at Station 1. We've had some fuel thefts. One of the firefighters had his fuel tank drilled and the fuel drained out of it while he was on shift. He got up to go home and made it out to 285 and ran out of gas. And he thought it was a leak, brought it back, and our fleet manager got up underneath it, and some, there was a fresh hole drilled in the tank. Then we saw where he was parked, and you could see where there were metal shavings. Somebody drilled it and drained the fuel out of it. Then last week, we ran out of fuel, we ran out of diesel for the first time ever in, in today, huh. in, which is pretty surprising. You know, we've got a number of stop gaps, so that doesn't happen. We started going back, and it looks like we were missing about 105 gallons of fuel um, with our fuel tracking system. 
And in looking at it, what it looks like, there are some wrench marks on the fill site. It wasn't through the tank. You know, we've got all that secured. Somebody dismantled the uh, fill unit where the vendor puts fuel into the tank. So somebody took that apart and pumped some fuel out of it. Next question is, do we have cameras back there? We do, but they probably did it at night, and the light is terrible, and it doesn't really matter. So what we're going to do to mitigate that is, well, we've... Change all the locks, but right now we're working with electrician. We're going to try and get more lights back there, some motion sensor lights, and hopefully people will get sunburns when they come on at night. We're going to have a lot of light back there. I'm not really sure what else to do. We started exploring fencing and all this. There's not a lot of good options, so we're going to start with the lights, and then we're going to continue to explore the fencing and securing things. Um, it's not great, but it's kind of the sign of the times, unfortunately. Um, I have a friend who works down the hill, and he was joking because all of their new fire stations have eight foot tall chain link with carcinogen wire around them. And he said, you know, he laughed that we don't have that. But that's, I think, the first time ever we've had any crimes with any of the firefighters' cars. Um, so, something about it we're working on ways to fix that. Volunteer firefighters had 235 hours of staffing at Station One. We still average 2.5 members per call and 18% of calls overlapped. Average response time was down to 842, and that was mostly due to the proximity of the calls. We just had a lot right off 285. We didn't have a lot in the far-reaching areas of the district. Um, calls were down with 92 calls, but the acuity was up. You know, the wildland fires, even the smaller ones, a one-acre wildland fire takes a number of people, and it takes a lot of time. And then you have to go back and check the fire and then you have to go. So that, that's part of the reason that we're at 2.5 members per call. For even for a small fire, we still had a lot of resources tied up on those incidents. We also had people involved. <clears throat> we, started, we started getting our uh, business at the public lands, Staunton, and everywhere with hike outs. And those are also labor intensive, which leads to the lower members per call. Uh, other than that, I think everything else is relatively normal. Um, transports, again, are trending downwards with only 23 transports for that month. Uh, training, we had 166 hours of training, and the Recruit Academy has completed its last test with Hazmat last week, and uh, graduations next month. Fire Marshal Parker was out on some days on some sick leave. He did six inspections for the month of February, and we're still having a uh, plan review come in for new construction. What's that? February? I'm sorry. That was... Did that speak in there? That's what Oh, yeah. Look at that. I apologize. That was, that was one we missed. Um, not February, but June. Uh, fleet equipment facilities. Um, the purchase of the utility vehicle is finalized. It said deliveries next month, and they actually said, it, as I was saying before the meeting, it's in transit. Um, we should have it next week. We ended up trading in two older units, so the final price for that is $10,020, which is pretty fantastic. We were able to trade in the old Suburban as well as the Jeep Grand Cherokee with the third engine in it. Um, so between those two, we got very good trading values. And two apparatus that failed pump testing have been repaired. And facilities, we are looking at security cameras and exploring some other options to secure the stations. And both those tests were here. Correct. <laughs> My speculation is the proximity to 285. Um, you know, Inner Canyon was hit two months ago. Somebody stole quite a bit of fuel from them. Their station's off Turkey Creek, and that is not, that's pretty far off the beaten path. But same thing, they got in there and they were able to uh, steal fuel from the dispenser. Hmm. Okay. You cover that too? What's that? You're going to cover the wildland too, or make us. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I... <laughs> yes. Um, so, wildland. The, uh, this is the Joint Wildland Division Report. You know, we run this division with Inner Canyon. Um, so Wildfire Prepared is still growing. Um, Kelly is pretty much booked up right now, I think, into September. Um, so she's done 26 assessments for the month. She also ended up on two of the fires that we had. Um, she's been a tremendous asset with her background in wildland fire as well as forestry. It's, it's working out really well. Um, our ambassadors... Um, we've still got 32 ambassadors. Some people are not involved, but others are coming on, so that, that program's working really well. Um, and we are actually going to be including the ambassadors into the Elevation Celebration. I believe that's going to be part of the Wildland booth. 
Um, now, the big one, this is pretty, this is a very brief discussion of this, the CoSwap grant. Um, if anybody saw that on our social media, uh, Jefferson County was awarded $1 million through, it was part of the American Restoration Funds and the Recovery Act, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of it was to go to wildland fire. Um, Captain Yellen and Captain Mandel were integral in assisting the county in writing that grant. And so they were submitted jointly by Elk Creek, Jefferson County, and the Upper South Platte Partnership. They've been funded. Um, the kickoff press conference was held on Monday with uh, the governor um, and several state representatives. If you saw it on the news, everybody was teasing Captain Yellen. This is the first time we've seen him uncomfortable and nervous. So it's pretty fun. <laughs> uh, and the grant will consist of so landscape scale mitigation work at county open space, wildfire prepared will be used for dispensable space on private homes, and approximately 200 homes will be assessed in Elk Creek, Inner Canyon, and Evergreen Fire Protection Districts. That's probably the 30,000 foot view. At the next board meeting in August, Captain Yellen's gonna come in and give us a presentation on what this really looks like. Um, you know, the award was given out and it, there's, it, the, the application's probably an inch thick. There, there's a lot of parameters with this. What we're gonna get out of it, the big thing is a lot of landscape scale mitigation on public lands within our district. That's huge. <coughs> um, so that's gonna be a indirect benefit to us uh, you know, most of the public lands have been sorely neglected. Jefferson County Open Space is doing a great job with that now, and this is really going to push a lot of that forward. There's also going to be a lot of planning things at the county that I'm hoping are going to uh, assist us as well. Um, Foxton, the final grant reimbursement was received. Um, I don't think it made it in this financials, but we, we just got it, I think, on like Tuesday of this week. Um, so that was 15550 so that grant is closed out. We've completed that one. Um, and then the four room grant, uh, that's the shade, that's the fuel break at Glen Elk. That's one of the grants we have going. That's one down uh, uh, South Elk Creek, Elk Creek Road, working with that HOA there. We're doing a fuel break around that as well as mitigation around all the cabins. That's ongoing. Um, and then they're going to be working for then. So once the fuel break is done around that neighborhood, then they're going to start moving on defensible space from the cabins, but they're going to wait till the peak season. So most of those homes are second homes. Um, so they're going to wait till most people aren't there because the soothing sound of chainsaws around your house all day is, is not exactly what they want. Um, the next thing is Samson and Maxwell. This is down in Inner Canyons District. Planning continues for connecting the road between the two communities. Lockheed Martin is getting involved for the potential third option. So third option. So what this is, these are exit routes for some one-way in, one-way out communities. And they're working with CoSwap Workforce Grant to mitigate roadsides for the first mile of Samson Road. Uh, roadside mitigation is super complicated because right away is. Um, Samson is a very organized community and the property owners are larger property owners and the property owners are into it. That's the only reason this roadside mitigation is even remotely coming to fruition there. Most places the roadside mitigation is very complicated. Um, the elevation celebration is coming up and we're going to use that. We're going to mobilize our Type 4 team that we've been putting together between the two agencies to manage it. Um, that, that was brought up as, uh, you know, it is a complex event. It brings a number of people to the community and we should probably start managing it as such because we do have a lot of people in the community and historically we have that going on as well as calls. And so we're going to actually build a management organization to help facilitate with the organizers of the event. Thank you. <laughs> um, fuels crew, uh, the fuels crew, they've, they've, uh, COVID is back, if you will. We've had a couple people out with COVID. We've also had some of the line staff out with COVID. Um, so between that, weather, and some mechanicals, uh, they've still, in, in June, they did 74 properties. And total, they've done 658 piles since they started shipping this year. One thing they have discovered is almost everybody is maxing out on piles. It's no longer like the three to four piles. Everybody is pushing five by five by five and 15. Mm -hmm. So their cubic, their cubic yards is increased drastically. Um, so it's gonna be limited the quantity. The, the sheer volume is, I think it's almost double from last year between all the, which is good. Um, the module is, they've been actually helping the fuels crew keep up. We've been detailing people from the module into the fuels crew with everybody out with COVID and whatnot, just to keep up on shipping so they don't fall behind. 
Um, they went down to Texas and they actually went back to Texas right now. All the fire, most of the fires you're seeing on there, they're bouncing around there and they should be timing out at the end of the month and they'll be back here. Excellent. Thank you. I have a question. Yeah, Chief, I had a question on the uh, co-swap. Yeah. Work. So is all of that going to be done by uh, people within the two districts, uh, ours and, and uh, entertainment? Uh, the, the actual or work? The actual work. No. Are you going to hire some of it out? The county, the county is going to be hiring a lot of that. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be the fiscal agent. We're going to be the oversight of it. But the county is going to be actually dealing with vendors correct directly because they're they're talking about large scale stuff and it's just it's out of our scope. Exactly. Yeah. And we just don't have the ability. We're pretty much maxed out with work right now. Um, so most of it's going to be hired out to contractors to do it. If you've seen the work that has gone on at um, Myers, yeah. um, Danny Showers and his company, they did a lot of that. It's going to, it's going to be work on that. So it's hopefully going to be local local logging contractors that are going to get most of the jobs. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I did put in here, it just actually came to fruition this morning. If you guys remember over the last probably three, almost four years, we've been talking to the county. The county had a bunch of equipment from their from their fuels crew from probably 10 years ago. They had two bobcats, uh, skid steers, a masticating head, tree shears, a bunch of stuff. We've been working with them to try and utilize that equipment, and it's been sitting for, I don't even, ever since they yes. ended up getting rid of their crew. Well, we were working with Jess Daniel and Hal Grieve, the new emergency manager, and Inner Canyon has, as part of the Connor for Wildland Division, signed an IGA to utilize some of that equipment. So as of this morning, we were delivered the uh, skid steer with the masticating head, and we're going to be able to do it. We're going to be able to use it. What we're going to be using it for is, so up here it doesn't work so well in the timber model, but down in Inner Canyon in Oak Brush, Cutting it and piling it by hand is extremely inefficient, so it's going to be a lot of maintenance work for some mitigation that was done about 10 years ago. They're working with some HOAs down there to try and do mastication, if you're familiar with that. It's basically a, a big rotating head with teeth that chops everything up into little pieces. Uh, we, we had that delivered today, which, which is pretty cool. We're going to have a little media release and whatnot about it, but it's, it's pretty exciting because, like I said, we've been working on this for probably four years. With, with nothing and with some of the changes down at Jeffco, it worked out. Cool. Excellent. Any other um, next uh, agenda item is old business, and this is really more of an update of. So last board of directors meeting where it was a committee formed on uh, community outreach, sort of looking at a plan, a program, and we, uh, after a few fits and starts caused by me, uh, we finally were able to meet last uh, Tuesday, this Tuesday, last Tuesday, yes. <laughs> and uh, kind of get, get going. Um, we really had a, a great discussion. Sharon was there. Um, PIO Urban is up in Alaska, and as the fire was getting wilder, uh, she was not able to join us, but at least started out with some basic discussions about the objectives of what the committee would, would be uh, looking into, um, really sort of thinking more about strategically uh, matching sort of the board being informed, being able to be engaged in the policy sides of things, and just be in step with uh, the PIOs as they're, as they're working away on, on a few things, and also helping us to have a concerted messaging across both uh, policy members, folks working forward, and, and looking at things as we move forward. Um, <clears throat> Really, also one of the things we want to sort of explore a little bit more is getting some of the metrics around our community engagement so that we have an idea of the kind of outreach that we're getting and, and the effectiveness of some of those things. Um, moving forward, um, the committee will really work out towards uh, some additional new goals so we can sort of report back. But I think we had a fairly Good meeting to start us going. We made a commitment to move forward and continue to have some uh, ongoing discussions, expand our our group a little bit, and, um, and and report back as we go forward. We don't have another meeting set yet. That's really because of me. 
I will set another meeting uh, in the coming coming weeks. Um, Director Newby, you sure you want to add anything to that sort of overall report? Uh, or, uh, Tara? Anything? No. Oh, I think that covered it. Yeah. Good. And any other questions? What was the name of that committee again? Community Outreach or Community Engagement. I don't know if we've actually, you know, it's either outreach or engagement, one of the two. Well, first order. It's just uh, how effectively are we actually reaching out and, and having people of the community in our district and then also as the consolidations go through know what we're doing, be able to think about it, put us in a better position to have folks know what we're, we're really doing. So it includes websites, social media, uh, I think a lot of our, our engagement with the communities through the ambassador programs, the, um, the assessments, field crews, all of those things uh, come into play. So it's sort of a broad look at all of the tools we would use to help people really understand what Elk Creek is about and what all the good things we're doing are that are out there. So, and then and making sure that we all know what it is. And then also the bigger piece, I think, for the board, and at least in my mind, is to uh, be in a position to provide financial assistance when we need to add that into the Budget if we can <laughs> 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 and go forward. So um, just kind of keeping us keeping us moving in a unified way. So um, new business. We are um, discussion about service agreements on new development. Chief, you want to give us a little direction or? Yeah, um, we we've had. Uh, <clears throat> So service agreements, a little history of service agreements in the Park Protection District. The first one that I knew of was when Staunton State Park was starting to get put together. Um, I was not on the side that I'm on now. I didn't really know much about it. There was a lot of people in the neighborhood that were very unhappy about the park opening. It's going to destroy the neighborhood, et cetera, et cetera. Anybody who's lived here for a little while probably lived it. It was pretty much a rinse and repeat of what every new development gets. Um, and there was talk between the current chief at the time as well with the state and the board to put a fire station and fire truck in there as well as some rescue equipment. Um, I don't really know what happened. Like I said, I was not part of that. I was pretty far down. I just I was upstairs. I was on the other side of the flagpole, so I didn't really pay attention to what went on. Um, after that, we had the Catholic retreat. That was another one. Um, that ended up being they were going to pay for some positions here due to the amount of people that they would bring in because that that was going to be one of the largest covered areas in our district and there was something worked out between the board and the Catholic retreat yet again wasn't really part of that one as well that was Chief McLaughlin and the board at the time fast forward uh, Connor for Commons we had that one um, that the board voted not to enter and then layers of complexity uh, Yet again, we're still involved in the lawsuit about that. Um, and now the bike park is the next one. We're having a number of people saying that we should enter into agreement with them. We're other, having other people saying we should not enter into agreement with them. And I, I, I think it's worth the board talking about what their thoughts are because all these developments are going to continue coming. And, you know, I mean, everybody asked me if. if what am I going to do about it? And I mean, ultimately, it's a board decision. You know, entering into contracts like that, it's, it's a board decision. It's not my decision. And I, I think the board needs to discuss kind of where they're at with it and what they're thinking about because these developments are going to continue to come. And I, I think it's a hot button. A lot of citizens in the district want to know about it. And, you know, everybody seems to think that we control development, and which we don't. Um, yeah, so that, that's, that's kind of the direction. I, I don't necessarily think it's like a motion or anything, but I think it's worth people hearing and just kind of having it, you know, kind of where the board's leaning and what people are thinking about it moving forward, because we're going to have a lot more. So maybe as a way of background, I should just at least uh, explain service agreements versus... Um, Correct. Yeah, apologies. That's, 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 the one th that's the one thing I missed. I apologize. So, yeah. So at least here in Jeffco, or at least in our area of Jeffco, there aren't any impact fees assessed to developments, which would be a way for us to have some additional resources that would meet um, 
some of the impact of the development going forward. So one way to offset um, impact of developments that get approved by the county would be for the fire district to enter into an agreement, a contractual agreement, that would identify uh, sort of the resource needs uh, for the district to be able to cover that district as well as other aspects of our overall performance and coverage. Um, so that, that we're not left just sort of with those similar resources that we currently have to try and go uh, uh, serve uh, new developments within the district. And we really, in some sense, if they get approved to be developed by the county, we have to serve them regardless. Um, and so one of the ways to think about um, you know, offsetting some of that challenges for the district would be to contractually agree um, about resources, whether they be personnel or equipment, to give us some additional assurances. And it's kind of a creative, as far as I'm, I'm concerned, it's a it's a interesting and creative idea to um, at least explore and try and identify ways for us to make sure that we're in a capacity to continue to serve existing members in the district as well as uh, people who come in and are, are granted the ability to create de uh, developments. And, and, I, and it's something that gets used quite a bit around the country um, in various different ways and uh, we've had some fits and starts. We've never, it sounds like, had a successful uh, service agreement um, here. And, you know, it takes a little bit to think about what, what we need to meet the needs of a, of a development, but also offset the impact that development might have on the rest of the district as a whole. So just the one I'm familiar with, when we were talking about uh, for Commons, we had looked at a Type 6 engine, I believe. Was that in there? I don't know what the engine was. We had some engine, and then a number of of paid firefighter positions that were part of that agreement that would stage up and some of that would end over a certain amount of time but at least we had a no it was a ladder I was so we had a ladder truck point. to get um, so we could reach reach the heights of those places and even maybe some of the new homes that are around um, so you know it's just a it's a way of sort of looking at it and I, I know the board we got pretty far down the road as far as what that service agreement looked like. We had backed out uh, at one board meeting and that was the last discussion that, uh, partly because I think that we're still in litigation over that actual issue right now. I think we're currently still on track to be at a court of appeals uh, decision. So their district court decision is being appealed at a higher level. So that's sort of the background. Does that make sense? It does. Um I think the other point that's that's worth noting is the other option. You know, if we aren't entering into a service agreement um, and the uh, development gets approved, then our other option is to go to our taxpayers to be able to service that. And I think that weighs into the discussion. And one thing to dovetail into that, you, you did mention impact fees. We explored that with the previous board. Impact fees... You can't just set them. Um, it involves uh, a nexus study. Uh, we got some bids on it. It was right around thirty-five thousand dollars a year, or thirty-five thousand dollars for the initial study. It's supposed to be updated every five years. And with the prior board, we kind of talked about that. Is there really going to be enough development to offset that? It's different when you talk about you know fire departments going up by twenty-five. You know, there's endless development going on. Every square inch is going to be filled with houses. Our development is limited, if you will, you know, where we don't have, because impact fees are only on larger commercial developments, they're not for single family dwellings. And so we kind of, when Director Barrett was on the board, he talked about it on the board, and it was kind of a toss up. We even researched it if, you know, every five years spending $35,000, there's going to be enough development to offset that. And we weren't sure if there was going to be. So it didn't really seem like that was a good option with what we have in our district. Yeah, at, at that time, that was a certain point in time. 
Um, my perspective is that uh, entering into individual uh, service agreements, uh, while it may sound fine, is um, I think sort of a slippery slope, or at least it can be. Um, with the amount of development that we have going on or proposed in the uh, community, we would be writing service agreements very, very frequently. Which costs and, money also. You know, That's right. do, doing a sort of a one off sort of service agreement, I think, would tie up a lot of resources. I think it may, the service agreements may or may not be enforceable. <coughs> so, you know, the district would be on the hook no matter what. Um, and the district may end up spending a lot of time and resources pursuing these service agreements, and then in the end, um, the development may or may not happen. Um, the development may, may get uh, part way into <coughs> the development and then peter out, you know. Um, that an LLC can, can, can fold and, and run off very, very easily and quickly, and I think we've seen that. So what I, I would like to see is us explore some alternatives. So impact fees, um, I'd like to get some legal advice, you know, for, for, the, boat, for the board as to you know, what, what can the fire district actually pursue in terms of impact fees or other remedies that uh, allow us to um, to assess maybe the property or other mechanisms? I'm, I'm not sure, but I'd like to get some legal advice to see what our options are. So, sorry, Doug, Tillman, Chuck just said. Um, I agree that service agreements, if they start multiplying exponentially, that they could also get very expensive because I know we spent quite a bit of money on legal fees for the last service agreement that ultimately the board said no to. The other thing I would have concern, and I think Chuck has sort of said this, is that the only way to, let's say, the other party defaults on that service agreement. The only way to get remedy for that is to go to court. And again, that is additional money spent, and I know what the budget is for the good case, so um, that is even additional money that we would spend. So I don't know what the alternatives are because my concern with impact fees is I thought those were set by the county, not the fire district. It's, well, the, the Nexus study will study the, the development and the, the impact of what that's going to do to us, and it takes a bunch of things, and it's kind of set by that. Then we have to go to the county, because the county eventually collects it, and then gives and it, it gives to it us. To us. Right. Okay. Kind of property taxes. Correct. Yeah, property. it's just yeah. another, it's another yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. So, I, 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 don't, I don't say that service agreements are like, totally out, but... I just think there are a lot of pros and cons about service agreements and multiplying them to the extent that we have the last service agreement could be fairly expensive. And I'm also concerned about, it. my biggest concern I think is if the developer, whoever is putting this forward, it could be the developer, it could be the developer's investors, if they default on that service agreement, and then the only way we're going to get the money to fund the resources that were committed in that service agreement is to go to court, and that might be more than $35,000, and, and that could be more than $35,000 over a year, so I don't know if the absolute idea is to explore impact fees and have that updated said every year? <clears throat> it's every, uh, good, good best practices are every five years. Every five years. So you spend $35,000 every five years to update, give or take, right? Mm -hmm. To update that. Is that less than we would spend with lawyer fees, first off, going through the mm -hmm. service agreements and 
paying the attorneys to go through that, paying the attorney just to, to basically ferret out what's in that service agreement and then ultimately bring it back to the board. So I can't do a real quick cost benefit analysis, but $35 a year doesn't sound bad to me, but again, what if the development doesn't go through and you don't get any impact fees, so it could be some cost. There's just like pros and cons to this whole thing. I don't know really the answer. I don't. I guess my response to some of that would be is if the development doesn't go through, then we don't have the impact. So until we have the existence of the development completed and we build and structure into the contracts, you know, stages for getting the equipment and the resources that we need during the, some of that process. Um, you know, I, I get it, everything can always fall apart. The other thing is, I would say there's an economy of scale as you develop these, the first one is always gonna be a challenge and have longer amounts of time for us to have to work on. But as that develops, if we are doing a lot of these, we're gonna get better at it and quicker at it and uh, it's gonna be boilerplate and we'll be on our way. So um, I'm happy to explore other options as long as we're just not as long as we keep, you know, service agreements as one of those pieces because they're not that different than impact fees. And I don't think we're going to garner that many impact fees up here because of the way the developments are going to happen. It's going to be specific to some certain types of developments that are, are coming through. So, um, yeah, Melissa. Um, I was actually going to say I'd like to hear what Director Brixley has to say. If he's still there. When Pigs are there, name's up. I am. I'm having a hard time hearing everybody. Sorry, I was not talking loudly enough. I guess we're on the table is I think we're the next, um, well, I guess what I'd say is maybe the next thing we need to do and we're all together is explore this a little bit further. Um, yeah, I think so. <clears throat> and, and, think about or at least go back and because I haven't really looked at the impact fee um, I have the statute that governs it but we'll, um, I haven't had a chance to really go through it very clearly yet so and are those the only options and are those the only options yeah <clears throat> and then one of the other things to think about in the, in the bike park I mentioned that or um, people are talking about service agreements with them service agreements need to be set on something, you know, a standard. You know, okay. if, if it's going to be NFPA 1710 or 1720, which is the service delivery, that's a national standard, so it's very easy to base that metric. The bike park is one of those wild cards because there's not really a set metric for service impacts, which makes that one even more bizarre because we're, we're going to have to come up with something hard facts that you can actually put in there and, and verifiable. And all I'm doing is just adding to your complexity to think about this. But, you know, so the, the Conifer Commons, Conifer Heights, whatever it was, again, that one was an easy one because it was based on X amount of units times 2.4 people per unit. You have a population per square mile, which pushes it up to a suburban slash urban population density, you know, almost 1,000 people per square mile. So there's a set metric of service that we need to deliver to that. A bike park's different because there isn't an NFPA blank for that. Well, I, 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 would, uh, I would offer that we try to get some advice from outside counsel and explore what our alternatives are because we know we're going to be impacted. Mm -hmm. the, and, and the question is, how do we recover from those impacts? So uh, I would like to hear all the options explored thoroughly. Oh no, it's <laughs> there's okay. plenty. I set up for several of this. <laughs> you did several service agreements for <laughs> No, I was yeah. Um maybe uh Director Pixley, if you want to reach out to uh, legal, you know, John Camille has been he's uh, our, our legal firm, he's the special district expert and you know, who works with Adele. Um, he's been integral in guiding us through and he probably has all the emails when we talked about this probably four years ago so he can um, if director picks if you want to reach out to him and talk about this stuff and 
have an update. Yeah, I think that uh, uh, this would be a great conversation here. Maybe uh, Chief, you and I can get together and uh, start to formulate a conversation with uh, our legal. Yeah, that sounds good. I, I think that's probably the next step, just to just to look at the options. Because I, I don't think development's going to stop, unfortunately. That's just what it is. We live in a great place, and everybody else wants to live here. That's just what it is. Um, <coughs> yeah, there's at least yep. four new houses just within the top of Connor for a moment. So. Oh, yes. <laughs> We are still getting just as many new construction plans. Um, yeah, that's that's just what it is. All right. So uh, add that to old business uh, for the next agenda. Let's go to the memorandum of understanding for common council. Uh, I can touch on that. So the the local has started working on for if you're not familiar. Probably not. NFPA 1500 is the uh, standard for occupational safety, health, and wellness program. And we've been working on that. We've been trying to build up some resources for firefighters for an employee assistance program. Um, this is the first MOU that we're going to put together. What this is going to be is for firefighters, they can reach out to them. It's funded through uh, Building Warriors and a couple other foundations, so everything's grant covered. Uh, this is all put together by the local. Their wellness coordinator is Urban. Uh, Bethany Urban, um, and this is the, the first one that they put together. Uh, what I'd like is the board to you know enter into this. Uh, the MOU is pretty simple. It, it doesn't look like it's in the packet, which is unfortunate. I just realized yeah. that. That's going to be a lot tougher. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, essentially what it is, it just says that the district's going to pay for services if it's not covered by grant. Uh, we already do that with some counselors. We've got several counselors that we've used in the past, and we pay for it. This is something that they wanted more so than just an invoicing agreement. There's really, I mean, for me, it's a no-brainer. You know, there's no impact. It's no different than dealing with any other vendor. Um, one of the big things is complete on non being anonymous for any of the firefighters right. using it. Um, and that, that's the gist of it. We're 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 going to keep moving forward with uh, the wellness program. Um, we're hopefully going to start physicals here in the next couple months as well that are based on 1582, which is a standard for physicals, pre-cancer screening, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just one of the steps that we're working on. But it's going to be tough without the actual MOU. So yeah. that will, uh, yeah. Well, in, in principle, it sounds awesome. And I would certainly have supported an employee assistance program of this type and Make sure it's clear and open, and let's, let's get it in the packet for next month. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yes. Okay. Public hearing announcements for inclusion of the 13640 Old Point Trail. I can touch on that one too. That'd so great. The inclusion exclusion. Um, there's a term, no man's land. No man's land are properties. Uh, Director, you be familiar with properties that are not included in any fire protection districts. There's not many of them around us anymore um, over in Clear Creek Canyon. If you guys remember the Bald Mountain Fire from a couple years ago, that involved no man's land, Jefferson County open space, as well as I believe Foothills Fire. Mm. Super complicated. Um, and in no man's land, for some reason these parcels have either not been developed or they're accessed from a different fire protection district, whatever. Uh, this particular piece of dirt is over off Hewsbury Lane, which is down by Kester. It is a piece of dirt that belongs to nobody. Um, and mm -hmm. so what they're doing is the petition for inclusion. Um, I've never done this before. I talked, I spoke to uh, Chief Sherlaw. What it is the board has to approve to include it into our district. Um, so once we include it into our district, our district line gets a little jog and that becomes part of our tax base. And that's essentially it. Um, we have to have a public hearing on it and I can fill you in, this is another hot button. Um, but we're, I, rather, we're not supposed to have a discussion now. I'm working with legal, legal guidance right now. They're drawing up all the paperwork. Um, from the inclusion exclusion, I don't see any drawback. I mean, if we don't include it, they're just going to go to Inner Canyon. Inner Canyon will include it. They're trying to build a single family dwelling that's supposed to be short term rental. Um, mm -hmm. But if they don't build that, somebody's going to build a house on it. So it's, it's a piece of dirt that. It needs to be included in somebody's district if it's going to be developed and somebody's going to put anything on it. So but the next step is to 
have a public hearing. Correct. Announce that. Ian, what we need to do is we need to announce it this in a public forum, and we need to put the notice in the newspaper, and then we'll have the public hearing on it there. Um, and that's a public hearing to the board? Yeah, it's just public hearing here. Um, really, where they get complicated is like larger commercial developments, anything like that. This is just, I don't even know how big the parcel is. It's not a terribly large parcel. Okay, so we just have to set that. So is it legal going right. to come back with direction? And yes, I'm going to have the, yeah, I'm getting, they're drawing up the packet okay. right now. Unfortunately, um, during the process, the applicant forgot the legal description, which is one of the key components of it. Um, I'm working with one, somebody from uh, legal, and once it's all drawn up, I'll be able to deliver it all to you guys beforehand, next meeting, so you can see what it is, okay. and then essentially what it is, go through public hearing, and then the board will vote whether or not to include it or Okay. So two step process. I learned all about this. I didn't do anything about it until about a month ago. Did well. Great. Any other questions? No. Citizens, anybody, citizens group, uh, have something? Uh, Mr. Neil Whitehead, uh, um, as the, uh, there's been an announcement, the uh, Bike Park will have a community meeting by Zoom on. Uh, July the 27th, and uh, two white signs appeared yesterday evening or this morning down on Chevron Drive. And I was wondering if you all have received, the board has received any correspondence or communications from Jefferson County Planning and Zoning or the applicants regarding a will serve letter or a um, any type of suggested agreement or discussions. Um, I can feel that. Uh, yes, we did end up doing a will serve letter. Um, it, yet again, there are no standards for bike parks per se. What it did involve was a commercial development component of what that is. So, but without an actual site plan or anything like that, all it was was kind of that thirty thousand foot view of what it looks like. Was that done recently, or? Um, yes. There was one. There was a community meeting over a year ago, and that's why they have to have one. If they have yeah. a community meeting and it's been a year, then they have to have another one. So. Yeah. And I, I have to look to see if we've actually submitted that. We're working on a draft right now, but no, we haven't had any correspondence with the developer. It was just the usual notice that it was back on the table, if you will. Well, I, I kind of have a question. The will serve letter isn't done before the community meeting, correct? It's done as part of the application. Yeah, yeah, and so, I think they renewed all their the the process because it was over a year. Yeah, I, they have to start over. Yeah, basically, yes. they have to start over. So, at some point, we will be asked yes. to do a little server order, but it's subsequent to the community meeting because they haven't even applied. There's no application yet. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I thought no they yeah I thought they had started completely over yes. with all of it. Um, I'm not super familiar with the process. So I, I'm assuming they're going to, you know, copy the stuff from the last time and change the date. I don't know what they did, but um, they're pretty much starting over. You know, there's no, they haven't, according to what I read, they haven't formally applied yet. And when right. they formally That's my apply, understanding also. then the fire district will ask, be asked to do. Once the process so, starts again. Right. right. So. I haven't seen anything other than the announcement of the new community meeting on the 27th. And what I'm guessing is that starts the whole thing again. Then after yes. that, then yes. we start that whole yes. process that we were involved in last time. Correct. That's my understanding. Maybe so there, there hasn't really been any other than, you know, almost a rinse and repeat of what was done last year, and then it kind of disappeared. We didn't hear anything about it. So Neil, does that answer your question or more question or? Well, I, I guess it does. Okay. And so positive. I mean, I think we have to get through the community meeting before any sort of exchange of real server letter, et cetera, comes out to the planning zone and people. There has not been a discussion about any kind of service agreement. 
<laughs> That's the problem. No, we've had citizens pushing both ways that we should enter into service agreements. Some saying we shouldn't. Um, I think that one's a very complicated one because yet again, there's no standard. You know, so it, it's tough to base anything on. Um, but so, I, right. so the service agreement discussions are from outside, not not from the developer. So speculation that we might be entering one, but there's no discussion. Of no, absolutely not. <clears throat> Any other? And with that, I will entertain a motion for adjournment. Make a motion to adjourn this evening's meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. I appreciate you all being here. Thanks, Thanks everybody.